Okay, now that we're done with stump grinding, we, we're transitioning over here for doing some shallow trenching on our 12 inch deep trenching package. And I did want to point out a couple things here, the difference between the aluminum leg and the steel leg. Now the aluminum leg is what we use for stump grinding and brush clearing. And you'll notice that there's four holes in the aluminum leg to adjust for different operator heights so that you can adjust it so that you can stand up straight when you're grinding a stump. We have four holes in the aluminum leg design. That allows you to adjust the machine so you can stand up straight and be in a very comfortable position. Let's say, for example, we never used the machine with this foot spike when we were stump grinding because I had plenty of traction with the blue disc that was on there. But let's say you're working on a slope somewhere and you need extra traction this spike will allow you to get that traction. Now where this spike goes is right in the bottom of this blue disc right here at the bottom of the aluminum leg. You're going to unscrew the bolt that's holding that blue disc on and then you're going to screw this bolt right into the bottom of that and that will give you extra traction. Right now where we're transitioning from stump grinding to trenching, we have a different leg that we're going to put on here. And that leg is a steel leg. Now you can see there's five holes in it and also the holes are a lot lower because we're going to need to operate this machine in a lot lower position and you'll see that when we're trying to operate the machine. But it gives you different operator heights again, what's comfortable for you, whether you're a tall person at 6'6 or a shorter person at 5'2", at uh, it's going to allow you to adjust this machine where it's most comfortable for you. Now. In the case of, you'll notice uh, uh, for the transport wheel set that goes on the either leg, when we're moving the machine to go to, a, uh, uh, like if we're going to pick our machine up out of a vehicle and move it to wherever the stump site's at, you'll notice that the axles of the stump grinder is offset to one side. Now, let's say I want to move this machine whether it be in this case with the aluminum leg on it and I want to move it to go somewhere a long distance so I'm not packing the machine, I'm going to put those axles towards me when I slide it on this bottom part of the leg, I'm just going to slide it on, the axles are going to be back towards me, then what I'm going to do is pick up the leg and I'm going to rock it back towards the um, motor and and I don't even have to tighten the little nut or the little bolt that's in the top of that. It's unnecessary for just moving around. So that's how quick it is to get on there and we can just push it wherever we want to go. I don't recommend that using it for stump grinding, but just for moving it around, it's a great apparatus for that. Now you'll also notice that the wheel set is on the back part of the aluminum leg. When we put the steel leg on there, that wheel set is going to go on the front part of the leg and what that's for is to change the balance of the machine so it makes it very easy to trench with. So we're going to do that here very shortly. But before we do that, the things that we're going to change to make this do 12 inch deep trenches is we're going to take this top guard off of here because this is made to have the chips not fly out all over the place when we're grinding a stump. We want the, stu the chips close to the stump. But at, in trenching, we want to take this off so now we can see the whole wheel and that will allow us to get to 12 inches deep. So what we're going to show you now is how you take the guards off and what you do with it and, and, and the other attachments that you're going to put on here. And so we're going to do that right now. I'm going to turn this around so that you can see a little bit better of uh, some of the bolts and nuts that we got to uh, take off of here. And then uh, as we're doing this, you'll see how quick and easy this is to do. Okay, one of the first things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take off this little bolt right here that holds the front tab on here, what we call a Z bracket, to the top guard. Got to unscrew it. And then the, you've got four bolts up here on the top. They're, they're, you use a Phillips screwdriver to unscrew them with. 
and there's a nut on the bottom side. After you take the four screws out of the back of the top cover, then we got these two screws right here that we want to take out so we can finish removing the top cover. And now we're going to put on the top plate. It allows us to get 12 inches deep into the ground. And it also gives us a lot more visibility when we're trying to do stump grinding. But we let's say we got to trace out some roots to root prune. You get tremendous visibility. Now the only thing is that I caution everybody about is it will throw rocks about 50 feet out in front of the machine. So obviously you got to have plywood or some kind of a tarp up, just something to keep from throwing um, debris out in front of the machine. And, and, and I don't care if it's a piece of plywood or a tarp, just something. And then that way it helps to limit your liability. But in this case, you can see how much more visibility you have by putting this plate on. And this is both great for trenching 12 inches deep or stump grinding when you need maximum visibility. Remember when you're putting the guards back together, there's going to be the screw and a washer on one side, and then there's going to be a washer and a nut on the other side, sandwiching everything together. When you're tightening these bolts up, you don't have to reef on them with a 3 8 ratchet. It's just snug them up. They're small screws and Powerful guys can break these bolts off if they reef on them hard enough, and it's not necessary. The nuts are have a nylock insert in them, so all you want to do is snug them up, maybe with about 10 or 10, maybe 15 pounds of torque is all it needs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the teeth off that we was using for stump grinding, and we're going to change to a set of old teeth that we have ground the riders right off of them. Like as you notice, there's a rider like a chainsaw tooth to control the depth of cut. And what we're going to do is because all we're doing is digging in dirt, we've ground that rider right off of there. So we want the maximum amount of contact we can get with these teeth so we can cut the trench as fast as we can. And you can see the difference here between one that is great for grinding wood versus now one that we're going to use for taking dirt out of a trench. And again, these are dull teeth. These are teeth that I wouldn't even consider good enough to grind a stump. So I'm trying to utilize the cost of purchasing a set of teeth and using them for grinding stumps to start with. And when they get pretty bad, then turn them into a set of teeth that you can do trenches with. Sometimes, uh, like I don't even grind these riders off, I'll leave them intact. But in this case, I want to show what maximum performance can be is if you grind that rider off. And if all you're going to be doing is digging in dirt, this is the way to get the best production. Now, if you want to, instead of using these hand tools to take these off with, you can buy an impact wrench. DeWalt makes it, and there's some other companies. I think Ry Ryobi makes some. And you can unscrew these screws a lot faster than what I'm doing by hand. But normally, I don't change teeth out this quickly as far as from job to job. So it makes it look like we're spending an awful lot of time changing in and out. But we're doing an awful lot of different variety of type of work here. So that's why we're spending a lot of time trying to show you how to minimize your teeth damage and get the most cost effectiveness out of them. Once again, we're making sure there's no dirt between the cutter wheel and the back of the tooth here. We, we want to have that steel to steel. If you're doing trenching in a very rooty, uh, like a, let's say a piece of property that has a lot of trees and roots, I would suggest leaving the riders on because then it's not going to grab a hold of those roots and kind of want to jerk the machine ahead. So you definitely leave, leave the riders on. It's going to cut plenty fast enough. I'm just saying that if you go and grind in a very good piece of ground with not very many rocks or not very many roots, then by gr grinding off these riders, 
you can really make some fast headway in doing your trenching. Okay, now all we have left to do is we want to take off this back flap that we usually use for stump grinding. And now we want to put on uh, this angle bracket with the flap. And what it's going to do, instead of having the flap hang down, it's going to bring the flap forward so it doesn't rub on our transport wheels. And the positioning that you want to have is the angle, just like this with the flap going forward. Okay, so last thing to do here is we're going to put on the black leg. And that's going to give us the ability to put the transport wheel set in a place where the machine will balance best for trenching. And so it's just a matter of getting this leg off of here, putting the black one on, and doing some adjustments, and we'll be ready to go. On the aluminum wheel set here, I'm going to remind you of the axles being offset to one side. And when we had it on the aluminum leg for stump grinding and moving around to do stump grinding, we had the axles back towards us. But in this case, for trenching, we're going to turn it around and put the axles towards the cutter wheel. And then we're going to lock down, there's a jam nut on the top of this C bracket that's at the top of this transport wheel set. And we're going to lock it down so it doesn't wiggle on us as we're doing our trenching. Okay, now that we got the wheel set on there, we've got the angle bracket in the right spot. And you can see where the, the flap goes up over the top of the wheels so that they don't drag very much. And now you can see this machine balances really well over these wheels to where I can almost pull it. I don't have very much pressure here on the handle of the motor. And I'm going to be able to pull this thing backwards doing our trenches. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a demonstration, not only for doing shallow trenches, narrow for like sprinkler systems, electronic dog fences, silt barriers, cable TV installations, anything that needs a shallow trench and narrow, we're going to show you how the quick way is to do it with this particular trenching package. Now let's say if you want to put a French drain in, we're going to show you how to fishtail this motor sideways so that you can make a wider trench. So like if you want a 10 or 12 inch trench, you're going to be able to do that. Okay, we're getting ready here for our trenching application. What we're going to do here is we're going to do the narrow trench first and go down 12 inches deep. And what we're going to do is we're going to make one cut down the, about, uh, we're going to make about 75 feet of trench here for, to show you how fast it do this. And we're going to cut about four inches deep in the first cut. And then we're going to turn the machine around, come back the opposite direction. We should be down to somewhere between six and eight inches. Turn around third time and we're going to be getting closer to 12 inches deep.
Now, as you can see, we've made three passes here and we're down eight or 10 inches. And we did it in about 10 minutes. And this is about 75 feet of trench. So depending on the type of soil that you're in, if this happens to be a little bit on the wet side, and so you can hear the motor bogging down a little bit, but if it was dry clay or a drier soil, then you can go up full throttle on this and grind at the speed that we're showing you here. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a wider trench that's shallower for French drains. And you'll watch me fishtail this motor sideways so that we can get a wider trench. That's how you can put about a 12 inch wide trench in six to eight inches deep real quick is using the aluminum leg with that blue pivot disc. And you can see how fast I can mound up dirt over here. And then what I can do is kick it off with the cutter wheel and then keep on cutting. And you make a little pull back on the machine, skid the leg back a few inches, take another cut and it works pretty easy. And that's like I say, you can install French drains you can put in pipe for air conditioning lines, like if you need a four or six inch wide trench, this is a great way to do it. What we've shown you is a new way of doing stumps that you've probably never seen before, if, unless you've seen our machine grinding stumps. We've shown you the ability to do narrow trenches. We can do wider ones, depending on which leg assembly that you want to put on there that makes it easiest for you and the application you're doing. Uh, through all the years that we've been building this machine. It's went through a lot of evolution and people use it for a lot of different applications. And so today we helped add some of that information of new technology we have in this equipment. Uh, like, like this particular machine is a 12 year old machine that I bought back from two different companies and we turned it into a demo machine and it says a lot about the life of these machines. You can see how old this steel motor is with the twin air filter nuts on here. This is about a maybe a 15 year old motor and it's never been rebuilt and that's because we, we take care of stuff and we know what it takes to, to make our machines go a long time. And so it's a very simple machine and it has bearings in it that's all sealed up. It's belt drive. It only costs $19.85 at the current time for a V-belt. And so really your maintenance is going to be on this machine. Whatever teeth you use and air filters and spark plugs on the motors, whatever brand of motor that's on there. But this is a, a, a way of us showing how much evolution has went with this machine over the years. And especially with all the new technology of what we've been building with that instead of using castings for a lot of our parts, we now machine it out of solid billet aluminum. The bodies are still fabricated, and so are the guards, with the exception of the top guard comes out of a solid piece of aluminum. 
but everything else is billet aluminum and, and, and the cutter head's made out of alloy steel, so it's made to last you a long time and the machine should last your lifetime if you just do a little bit of maintenance on it. So that concludes our, our portion of this particular episode with showing you what it can do. And I hope you learned something about not only grinding with our machine, but uh, just doing tree work in general. Thanks very much for watching our video.